Breast Cancer Awareness uh, in October. Uh, tell us a little bit about why it's important that folks arm themselves against cancer and what are some of the things they can do in October to be more aware of the risk of breast cancer? Well, I think self-examination and mammograms are the two most important things. And if you have a, the incidence of breast cancer is now one in eight women will develop breast cancer. If a mother or grandmother had breast cancer, your risk is even higher than that. And I think just encouraging friends to have mammograms and doing those self, breast self-exams, uh, I can't tell you how important it is. The earlier we pick up breast cancer, the greater your chances for cure are. And if, if when in the last 20 years, it's gone from 1 in 13 to 1 in 8. So it, it's a very prevalent disease. I mean, it's... Um, we try to need to get everybody aware of what's going on with breast cancer. I mean, family history is the most important thing, but um, the screening is vital. Dr. Jeremy Militella joining us on the Jim Inkster Show, WRKF in Baton Rouge. Jim Nichols sitting in for Jim Inkster. Dr. Militella is a graduate of the LSU School of Medicine in New Orleans, trained at Earl K. Long Medical Center. Uh, completed his residency and fellowship at Tulane University. He's been treating cancer patients in this Baton Rouge community for 25 years, and we talk about breast cancer awareness in October, but uh, we're fortunate to have a world-class cancer center here in Baton Rouge. The Pennington Cancer Center's got the region's only IL-2 cancer treatment program. Tell me about IL-2 therapy and what is it used to treat? IL-2 is a type of immunotherapy which basically stimulates the body's immune system to fight the cancer. I started this program about 13 years ago. I trained, went to MD Anderson University of Pittsburgh to learn how they were doing it. And since then, we've got a very active program. We are treating anywhere from two to four people per week with this. Getting, but um, the... Interleukin, it's given in the hospital, but it's used for renal cancer and melanoma. And if you get a complete remission with this, the chances are excellent that your disease will not come back. I've had two people relapse in 13 years who have had complete responses. My first patient I ever treated 13 years ago with metastatic kidney cancer is alive and disease-free at this point. Uh, we are seeing just excellent responses. It's not for everybody. It's for probably 10% of the people who are diagnosed with these cancers because you have to have a good performance status, be in good shape, and those are the people who get the great responses. We're very selective about who we treat, but we've been doing it long enough now that we know who's a good candidate and who's not a candidate. And there are other treatments for renal cancer and melanoma. They will slow it down. This is the only potential for curing the disease. And we say cure. If somebody's out uh, 12 years with metastatic renal cancer and has no evidence of disease, there's an excellent chance it won't come back. And I've got patients I've picked up from around the country who are now out over 20 years who were some of the initial people treated with interleukin. That's how I got interested in it. And so we are very fortunate. We we have patients from Mississippi, Alabama, Florida. Um, we've had people as far as uh, Las Vegas come out for treatment. Um, recently had a gentleman from Denver. So we are getting people from all over because we have one of the few centers in the country. So, Dr. Miltello, if one were to be fortunate enough, if one were to be fortunate enough to, to uh, qualify, as I would call it, for the IL-2 therapy, would it be in addition to traditional cancer treatments like chemotherapy and radiation? Or is no, this an, it no, would it's be. It's by itself. <laughs> and the thing is, it's two five-day hospitalizations, and then you reevaluate. And if you're having a good response, you get two more five-day treatments, and that's it. So it's four weeks of treatment, and you, you stop. You do nothing else. What's interesting with this disease, treatment and disease is that you will get shrinkages up to a year after the treatment. And so it's uh, because basically you're stimulating the body to fight this cancer itself. And the side effects are intense while you're taking it, but you recover very quickly. I mean, I have people 
get out of the hospital on Sunday, and by Tuesday, they're out doing the things they were doing before. With the first treatment, it takes a little longer, but it's it's a very, if you know how to treat them and know how to manage the side effects, um, it's very well tolerated. Don't it gets a bad reputation because nobody, um, when it first came out, there were horrendous side effects and no one knew how to manage them. And since we started doing this 13 years ago, I mean, the toxicity is a thousand times better. We just know how to manage the side effects. So it's intense. I mean, it requires, I'm on the phone with the nurses all day long. I mean, but it, the whole key to doing this is having the proper facilities we at the general have a two wonderful nurses and a unit that works great. They, my nurses have been doing this with me for, for two I have now for seven years, and that makes all the difference in the world. They can tell a patient before it happens, this is what's going to happen to you in 20 minutes. And so having the proper people to do it and the right facility makes it a very workable project. Dr. Jeremy Militello, a medical oncologist here in Baton Rouge, joining us on the Jim Inkster Show. We're talking about cancer awareness and early detection, but we're also talking about the IL-2 treatment. You, you use it for metastatic renal cancer and, and for uh, melanoma. Why is it not something that could be used for other cancers? Not really certain. I mean, it, it's been studied in other cancers, but these are the two that have been shown to have respond to it. So that's... Um, I, I wish it worked as well as it did. Renal cancer is one of the most difficult cancers we treat, and melanoma. But uh, it's just not been shown to have any activity in these other uh, cancers. You talked earlier in the program about breast cancer awareness and, and, and the importance of self-examination and the incredible increase we've seen in the diagnosis of breast cancer. As, as a layman, I have to ask the question, are we seeing more diagnosis because more people are taking the time to be examined and the awareness is higher? Or do you feel as a, as a medical professional there's just more breast cancer out there than there was, say, 20 years ago? Uh, there's more breast cancer than there was 20 years ago. That's definitely, I don't think there's any question. We're more, and I think personally it's our diet. I think 50% of all of this we can attribute to our diet. Um, we're eating the high-fat foods, um, Everything that you eat has been processed and manipulated and has steroids in it. And we have just, you're seeing young ladies develop now at the age of 9 and 10, whereas 20 and 30 years ago they were developing when they were 11 and 12. It's our diets, I'm convinced. Just seeing the increase uh that's the only thing that could explain what we're doing. And I think it's the way we're manipulating all the foods. Nobody's eating natural foods anymore. Everybody eats processed foods. And we're definitely, we're picking it up earlier, but there's more to pick up. That's the problem. Dr. Jeremy Lotello, one of the leading oncologists in Baton Rouge. He's at the Baton Rouge General's uh, Pennington Cancer Center, and he's joining us on the Jim Inkster Show on 89.3 in Baton Rouge. Jim Nichols sitting in for Jim Inkster. Doc, um, the IL-2 program is, is something that is not widely known. Um, if you weren't able, if you were not from Baton Rouge, where else do they do IL-2 programs? There's a program in Houston, and that's the closest one. Um, there's, and I think uh, Tennessee has a program, but there's nothing in about a five-state area. We're the only ones doing it around here. So we're, um, there are 70 centers around the United States, and we're one of the 70 centers that do it. I don't have the list in front of me, but it's, um, there's nothing in the several hundred mile radius from us. So that's why we have been all over, all over the country letting people know. We have people from Georgia, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Florida, uh, and then we're getting calls from all over the country now because we are one of the bigger centers. We're one of the bigger centers doing this, and I get calls weekly from people just asking questions and wanting to know how we're doing this. Would you treat this patient? Is this person a candidate for it? Uh, there's one center in California. 
There's none in Nevada because we've gotten patients actually from Nevada. So it's um, it, it's it, it's really fascinating, and I just love it because I've never, up until 13 years ago, I had never had a patient with renal cancer respond to anything. And now to have people alive and out five, six, a few weeks ago, I had four people in in one week who were all out over five years with metastatic renal cancer. That's unheard of. Melanoma. Um, we talked about breast cancer and the increase in, in the diagnosis there. Uh, Louisiana is a big outdoor state. We like to fish. We like to hunt. We like to um, you know, go to football games. And, and we do right. a lot of things outside. Um, breast cancer can be traced to a great extent to as you call, as you stated, diet, but also family history. Melanoma, how much of that is related to exposure and how much of that is related to uh, heredity? I think most of it is related to exposure. Um, it, there is a small hereditary component, but it's mainly our lifestyles and the sun. And the big thing now is the tanning booth. Mm -hmm. uh, one visit to a tanning booth actually increases your risk of melanoma tremendously. I am shocked. I was reviewing all of this a few weeks ago, but that is really dangerous. I mean, stay out of the tanning booths. I mean, their incidence of melanoma just quadruples if you, and, I'm, and only one visit. I mean, so, but it's the sun exposure. If we could do anything, this is something that's very preventable using number 30 sunscreen, staying out of the sun, wearing protective clothing. Because melanoma uh, is a deadly illness. There are several new treatments on the horizon with melanoma. Again, none of them show any long-term benefits. I mean, they're six months to a year. Interleukin is still the only treatment out there that can offer you long-term survival if it works. Why is, well, why is melanoma so fatal? I mean, it, it, it seems to me as, as a layman that a skin cancer would be curable than more curable than a than, say, cancer of an organ, a kidney, or things of oh, that nature? Mainly because it's a rapidly growing tumor, and once it is spread from the skin, it attacks the liver, the lungs, and the bones, and the brain. Those are the, and it, it's just a rapidly growing tumor. It can actually do you in in a matter of weeks to months. I've had people die within uh, two months of being diagnosed with metastatic melanoma. It grows that rapidly. And up until... Interleukin, we had nothing that worked on it, and now we have uh, Yervoy, we have Zelbarath, there's a PD-1, a new drug that just got released about a week ago, but um, no long-term survival with any of these other treatments. Dr. Jerry Miller, I'm sorry, go ahead, Doc. There are, good, there are some really good things coming along, and we're hoping even looking at possibly combining some of these drugs with interleukin, but that's that's a ways down the road. But it's so there's some definite improvement, but we still haven't gotten there yet. A couple minutes left with Dr. Gerald Militello at the Pennington Cancer Center at Baton Rouge General. Um, fortunate to have someone of his history and his experience and his knowledge in our community. I was at the legislature, uh, spent a lot of time there. They talked about arts and medicine while we were at the legislature this year, and I found it kind of fascinating. Um, didn't realize how big a role that had. Y'all have got a unique program at the Baton Rouge General called Arts and Medicine. Tell me a little bit about yeah. what this is about. I, this is, you know, cancer affects the patient, the whole family, and it's not, it's a physical, it's an emotional thing. And a, the, your emotional status plays a big role. You can will yourself to live or die. And this arts and medicine has just been wonderful. Since the Baton Rouge General started this two years ago, we've just seen patients love it. It gives patients uh, a way to think about things other than their cancer. It's um, We're doing painting. They have music therapy. Um, we have... Um, they partnership with the Manship Theater and LSU School of Medicine. They're actually performers that come to the Baton Rouge General. There's live concerts every Friday. Uh, we have patients who, once they get involved in this, they're coming and playing music for our patients. We have patients taking chemotherapy, participating in the painting. But it just gives people a way to 
focus on something besides their cancer. And I, it's just real important. I can take two patients with the same diagnosis but a whole different outlook on life, and one will live three years and the other will live three months. So it's it's just a, another aspect of treating the whole patient and not just treating the cancer but treating their emotional state. And we get the families involved with this. We get patients involved with this. So it's been very, very productive. We had the program for the first time last year and had over 300 people there, and we're hoping for it to be even bigger and better this year. But just um less than one it, minute go ahead, Doc, go ahead. Sir. I just say we have less than a minute left and I wanted to hit one other topic and that is right. and you may have been talking you were going that way, I think, and that is the cancer awareness event. Uh it's a Thursday, October twenty third. Uh you want to tell us a little bit about that that's coming up at the Batners General? Yes. This is a free event. Registration is required. You must be twenty one years or older to attend. Just call the Batners General or go to batteriesgeneral.org for information on it. But it's a free interactive painting event that promotes cancer awareness and early detection. Dr. Miltella, thank you for joining us on the Jim Inkster Show. Jim Nichols sitting in for Jim Inkster. Hope you enjoyed today's program. We thank our guests, Joe Oliva, Stuart Rothenberg, and Dr. Gerald Miltella, all part of today's program. Thank you.